I only got one turn Holy left. Holy shit! Five thousand nine hundred. Are you, are you liars? We got five thousand nine hundred views. Fuck. No! Fuck! No! I did the wrong thing, Joe. I'm fucking fucked. What the fuck happened? Ah! Oh my god! This is your leader. This is who you decided to put. Oh my god! Stop following this guy. My favorite franchise is back, XCOM 2. And if you haven't seen my XCOM 1 angry review, go watch that now. So your first question probably is, is it as good as XCOM 1 or better, and is it worth buying? And the answer is yes, go out and buy it right now. I freaking love XCOM 2 and I want it to do well. And honestly, I was a bit worried at the direction it took. So for some reason we lost the war, even though I fought hard as hell to defeat those alien f**kers the first time. Checkmate. Oh, oh come on Prometheus. That's not cool. Not cool man. It's like that damn council just decided to give up because I couldn't protect one country like freaking Zimbabwe. But you don't understand, there will be nothing left. We've heard enough, Commander Joe. No, 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 don't. That, that doesn't make any sense. Who, who will protect you? We're taking away your toys. But... And then we're letting the aliens have their way with us. But... Oh yes, in the butt. The council's spoken. And they had their way with us, in the butt, and continue to have their way with us. Humanity has been subjugated and pacified, and the resistance is now a very small sect of just hopeless insurgents. How this was going to play out, and would it be any fun? And the answer to that is it plays out beautifully, and yes, it is a ton of fun. It turned out to be a fantastic design decision that leads to plenty of very cool scenarios. Wow, I'm fucking decked out, bros. This, is, this, this game is awesome. I've been playing 12 hours straight. That's how awesome this game is, but oh man, it's fucking worth it to deck this dude out. He's only gonna get better too. Now one thing you'll notice is how much more cinematic this XCOM is from the previous one, which already had a cinematic take. Uh, there's a lot more story, there's a lot more cutscenes to drive along the action. And I really appreciated that, as it's something new that the old nostalgic XCOMs didn't have previously. You hear that music, Joe? That means every single one of you are coming back. And I'm giving control to Jim. Everybody's coming back. Everybody. Everybody's coming back. <laughs> and they were like, see you guys sometime. Now, in this game, the Avenger, a uh, captured and repurposed alien vessel, takes the form of the XCOM base of operations. It's mobile, and so you'll be traveling across the world map, uh, think of it like Risk, and contacting different resistance elements left in the world, uh, building infrastructure, and attempting to stop something called the Avatar Project that the aliens are building. Uh, supplies and intel serve as your sources of income and resources that you'll manage, spending these to get better armor, better technology, and with intel to prepare yourself against alien surprises and progress. Black site missions allow you to slow down the Avatar Project progress, as well as dark events, which will hinder you in some way if they're not taken care of immediately. Discourage once and for all. Bitch, you can hear that! I heard that! Get the fuck out of there! It's too late! Your cooperation, we will overcome these radical elements and usher in another 20 years of peace and prosperity. They don't stand a chance. Commander, we 
should get a squad ready to deploy. You want me to go in there? Every mission is laid out very cleanly for you at the bottom of the screen. And if you let that avatar project get too far ahead, you will automatically lose the game. So it serves as a bit of a timer mechanic. Now, normally I hate timer mechanics like these in my campaign modes, but it's executed well that there's plenty of options to counter the alien's gains and, and even reverse them that it never felt bad. It always felt intense, okay? Sit down, sit down. Wow. That is some awesome shit. And now if we go over here, get those black site data coordinates, we can fucking lower that some more, I think. First off, we save. Soldier classes have been given an overhaul. Uh, there's, oh, the ranger who can use a friggin' sword. Yes, melee is in XCOM 2. Uh, there's specialists with hacking abilities. Though this hacking it was a bit more shallow than I would have liked, uh, it, it, but it's still very cool. There's the sniper who's Freaking awesome and overpowered. <laughs> he could get an insane number of shots against multiple enemies towards the end game. I hated my guy becoming a sniper, but by the end I was like, I'm so glad I became a sniper. Because the gunslinger stuff is so cool. Give us a bro! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we fucking not enough. It's not enough. I got this shit! Sit! Sit down! Angry Joe! Oh! Fuck, give me this! I see this one! This Woo! One. Got the wrong Fuck one. you, bitch! Gunslinger! Gunslinger, bitch! Anybody else? I need one more. Oh shit, I'm not done! What? Where the fuck? Where's he going? I can't see him! I can't see him! He dodged great. He dodged it. Uh, there's the Grenader uh, with Gatling guns or the Grenadier, or whatever. All important. Uh, having uh, the grenade launchers, which really, really help you. Um, and later you can unlock the Psy Operatives, which can do your mind control thing on the aliens and all sorts of other really cool, powerful sci-fi shit. Dimensional Rift. Now in XCOM 2, you get the jump on the aliens this time, meaning that you're concealed in this new mechanic, sort of stealth, and, and you could set up these epic ambushes for the aliens to walk into unaware. And it is oh so satisfying when you get your entire squad on Overwatch and just open up on these aliens as their bodies just fly across the screen and ragdoll. So good. But, oh shit, Snake. Those things can grab us out from the roof, but I don't think so. Open fire! Ooh, nice. Finish it off. Ooh! That is nice. So nice. Of course, this is XCOM, so you can also have epic failures, even with high hit uh, chance numbers. It should be higher than you gotta be fucking shitting me! Who fucking taught you how to shoot? I needed that! Who the fuck? How the fuck? It is really funny to miss a 95% shot. And honestly, this happens in real life too, so it's not really a drawback for me. It's a part of the game, you know? <laughs> There's no friendly fire. Don't miss! Twitch chat will shoot around her head. Please. Please shoot around her head. Ready? Oh. Yeah, look! Oh, she ducked! Boom! Nice job, nice job. Alright, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, but I understand how other casual players may absolutely loathe that they can miss these high shots, because it can snowball and lead to your favorite character dying. God yes, Titan. damn it, Titan! God damn it, Magic Man! God damn it, Ataku! I got this! 
God! Those Damn it, Angry left. Joe! Wide left! What, what the thinking? fuck is going on? And that, but that's why you save scum plenty in this game. Don't feel bad about doing it either. It is part of the XCOM experience. Join us. We all do it, mate. Joe, it was a complete failure. It, 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 tis, complete failure. It is a horrible one. That is not what you need to do. So learn from my example and don't do what I just did. Yeah. So you went in there without equipping your peoples. Where no. <laughs> Nobody died in battle. Joe's things don't count. <laughs> it's part of the fun. And now, uh, if you don't pick up your evac, uh, or if you don't pick up your soldiers for evac, you'll lose them and lose out on their equipment and armor that they were carrying. So it makes for these very movie-like cinematic moments as you try to get your favorite soldier out of harm's way. Pete saying, let's fucking go! I'm gonna... Alright, hit that fucking tower now! We need <laughs> Marines! We are leaving! That is for you, Titan! <laughs> Most missions are, are now timed, which again, I don't normally like, and here it works a little less in its favor, it, it, but it does make you play in interesting ways, and it leads to more intense engagements. However, I understand that this is the largest complaint amongst players right now. It forces you, truly, to play one way, you know, rushing and not giving you the conservative tactical approach that we're so used to getting. Commander, we're running out of time here. Shut the we fuck up, Central! I am the commander! <laughs> Look at me! Look at me! I am the command. Don, what are you doing? Alright, fuck it. Uh, and it's used a bit more often uh, than I think they needed to use it here. However, I've been playing XCOM since uh, I can't even remember how long, some 20 years or more. It's nice to play it in this different way and, and I liked it. But I hope they do tone that shit down in the future, all these timed missions. We ain't got no time to fuck around, everybody just run. I don't give a shit. Let's go. Fuck it. Ain't got no time for the bullshit. Ain't got no bullshit time. Okay? Okay. Um, there's a huge variety of aliens, and new ones kept popping up at a good and regular rate. And they delightfully work in different uh, ways, and some have really enjoyable nightmarish abilities that are unique and can change gameplay significantly. Well done, Firaxis. No! What, what the fuck the is fuck? going on? There's a fucking trap! Was that a fucking trap? Yeah, you know what? If you put your guy next to him, I bet you that thing would have fucking... Oh my god! I was like... I was happy. I was like, there's two right there. Is that Titan? Yes! That's fucking Titan! Titan, get the fuck out of there! I thought he... Uh... That was a fucking trap! Though I would have liked more environmental damage and different damage types, I still don't get my flesh-eating bacteria guns that the aliens use on you where your face melts off. It would be cool to see your Rambo die in other ways besides getting shot in the head. Like getting his face melted off by flesh-eating bacteria guns. That would be fucking cool. We need more creative stuff like that. We do get a little bit of acid this time and, and some, uh, but only one unit seems to pour acid on the ground or you, so I, I just wish there was more stuff like that. That should be the next iteration. And the game can be brutally hard. In fact, it's harder than XCOM 1, in my opinion. Uh, if you're playing on anything above veteran, you're gonna have your work cut out for you. But that's part of the reason why I love this franchise so much. Where are you going? No, 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 no! 
No, don't kill Joe! Don't kill Joe! Don't kill Joe! I'm gonna run! I didn't see it! 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 Get out of my head! I didn't see it! It's got base defense, one of my favorite things in the old school XCOM. It's built in here, though. You never really fight amongst the Avenger rooms that you built and, and have that, you know, feeling of, oh shit, that's my stuff that you blew, just blew up. You're just outside defending the ship on a certain scripted mission, so that's a little bit disappointing. Um, and the game still has a few of its predecessors' issues still not fixed, puzzlingly. Like the camera angles sometimes being blocked and obscured by my, obscuring my enjoyment of my freaking kill. You know, I'm staring at a fucking wall. And just little graphical oddities, like soldiers busting out windows that they've already busted out before they shoot. It's just stuff like that. It's still in the game. I'm like, how? why is this still not fixed? Um, I also feel the lack of jet fighters and the interception mechanic and this insurgent style uh, campaign map play leads to many false choices. There, there seems to always be a clearly better choice. Uh, and so this made this supposed wide open campaign map feel far more linear and static than I liked. And if you didn't build certain rooms at the perfect and early times, you're seriously hurting for the rest of the game. If I didn't have Twitch chat helping me, it, it would have been a lot more brutal than it was. Um, and it's an inherent limitation that I wish they would have worked on, uh, opening it up a bit more. Um, and also, because of the heavy story cutscenes and more linear gameplay on that campaign map uh, than ever, they've sacrificed some of the game's replayability, uh, especially of the older nostalgic ones, uh, to achieve this new style, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, if there were like branching paths with different cutscenes, that would fix this and it would take this game into like 10 out of 10, like different cutscenes that you see different times. Legendary territory. I hope that's what they do next if they do another one. Now, one thing this XCOM does better than any other is its customization. They were already doing good customization in the last one, but here you can really go crazy with the soldier options and then take your unique creations and put them into a character pool and see them in the future, share them with others. The armor, weapon, and character you know traits, it's fantastic. I only hope they continue adding things and voices and options and, and, and numbers. It really improves your attachment to each one of your operatives and makes each mission that much more exciting. This is the secret sauce of XCOM. And with their emphasis on the modding community, opening that game up to like full total conversion things are only going to get even better. I cannot wait until somebody makes Colonial Marines, Aliens, or Star Wars Stormtroopers, and Starship Trooper total conversions. Please Message me if you are doing these things. I want to play them and show them off. So the future for the game is so exciting right now and for this community. However, the worst thing that we can say about the game is that it is buggy as hell when I played. Commander, I'm sending reinforcements in from the Avengers reserves. Fucking Avengers, we need to re... getting pretty epic. It was perfect. It was a good... I would have had him. Not a Totally would have had him. <laughs> no wonder the Steam reviews. Okay, so... It's, it's dropping. We're dropping now, We're man. We're dropping. We're dropping now. Did they force you guys to shove this out too early? Look, Garth... Garth tweeted at me. Garth is a senior producer. Let's see what he said. Hey, hopefully you're not... <laughs> hopefully you're not running into bugs. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. No, Garth, I, I love the game, dude. But get get your team on this quick. Get some patches. Patches. Okay, it's prone to crashing, prone to freezing. Uh, I had something like... A hundred save files by the end because I got so freaking paranoid. Uh, 
and this was on the early review copy that it took me forever to review. Sorry about that. But I, I've heard that since they have released some hot fixes that improve the game. But that first version at retail, many, many people were having issues. And I still think there are a few. Uh, I don't understand why in this case it was a PC exclusive. If it wasn't optimized or stable at release at all. It just... You know, and the bare bones multiplayer doesn't help or increase the overall value of the score like I wanted. Uh, you, you do get to play as the aliens, which is always fun, but I wish more would have been done to improve this here. Uh, th there's just barely anything to talk about different from the original XCOM 1 review. It's just done over again. Um, and finally, the game loses a little bit of its creepiness. It, it lacks some of the horror elements from that, that previous one that they set up at the beginning. Is that your man, Delta Four? Negative, sir. That's someone else. <laughs> Dr. Volan, what's he saying? He is saying, help me. Thankfully, we do get procedurally generated levels that keep things fresh, and that's much appreciated. Though I could have sworn I've seen some levels repeat already, but perhaps that was just from the scripted uh, ones. So, the final verdict for XCOM 2 is freaking amazing. It's hard for me to rate. I wanted to give this one a 10. The ending is satisfying now. We know what the aliens' motives are. They fixed that from my complaints in the last one. And we get this nice little tease at what might be in the future. But at the same time, there were some uh, bugs and issues which hold me back from giving it a 10 out of 10. We're at 9. And then when you think about uh, the, the, the linear nature of it and the fact that it would have been a perfect time to add cooperative mode and beef up the multiplayer a little bit more. I think we're sitting at, uh, and the fact that this is a second game in, in the franchise, I'm gonna be hard on it. I'm going to give it tough love right now. I think that it is an eight. An eight out of 10. I, I want it nine and it will be a nine once all of the patches and things fix it. It's gonna be a nine out of 10. And then it'll probably be a 10 out of 10 when the community takes it over and releases these total conversions. You can see I'm giddy right now thinking about them. But it, it, it's seriously at release, it was about an eight out of 10. And after they fix it, nine out of 10. But in any case, I am gonna give it my badass seal of approval. Been a while since I've used that. Start using it more. And uh, I really do think you should go out and get it, even if you're not a fan of strategy games. You really just got to, come on, you'll like it. I'm serious. These are the types of games that I like the most. You should give it a shot and see if it's your thing too. Okay, guys? Well, that's it for the XCOM review, and I will see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Let's go.